Hey everybody, coming at you from out in the wilderness. It's a very, very mild day here in Georgia in January. And I got to thinking, <clears throat> somebody had suggested one time, they said, why don't you show us all your machetes in one video? Just give us a quick look and just a, what you quickly think about them. So I thought, that's a pretty cool idea right there. You know, it may take a little while, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show my machetes. I picked out, there's 30 of them, all right? Now, some are machetes, some are parangs, some are go-locks, some are kukris. But for the sake of this video and showing them, let's just call them all machetes, <laughs> okay? And have a look at them. Now, to get through 30 of them quickly, uh, I'm not going to go real deep into the details, but I'm going to say a few bits and pieces about them. And I'm going to pretty much say if I hate them, if I like them, or if I love them. So, and then you can go from there. And then what little details that I can remember offhand or that I think are important, I'll say. All right? So, <clears throat> you ready to get started? Let's get some machetes and let's take a look. All right? This is the Condor Warlock. It's a leather sheath with two snaps. It's got a micarta handle. <clears throat> it's about 3 sixteenths thick. It's sort of like a parang. It's like a... I play on a parang. I like this machete. This is a charade. It comes in a Cordura uh, sheath. It's got one snap on it. And it's got a snap up here. They call it a kukri. They call it a charade kukri, but it's actually more like a hybrid between a bolo and a kukri. I like this machete, but I absolutely love this handle. The way it's got the palm swale. Charade kukri. This is a Condor 18 inch machete. This is a leather sheath, and I absolutely love that sheath. It's, it's a fantastic sheath. The machete is just okay. The handle, I hate the handle. It's uncomfortable. You have to wear gloves for it. But this, mach this machete is stainless steel, so it would be great for in swamps and wetlands, and even good for people that live near the coast where there's salt water. Condor 18 inch. This is the cold steel jungle machete. It comes in a Cordura pouch a sheath. It's got one snap to it right here and then it's got a snap around the handle. I think it's 1055 steel. I taped up the handle and then I put tape around it right here to where I could choke up on it because that seems like a lot of blade for a short handle. I like this machete. I'm okay with the handle for now. But someday I'm going to rehandle it from here to here, and then I'll love it. Cold Steel Jungle Machete. This is a homemade machete by me. <laughs> I made this machete about 10 years ago. Give the sheath a little bit of a pull and a wiggle, putting pressure on the spine. It's a quarter inch thick, 440 stainless steel beast. The handle's Delrin. One-of-a-kind handmade 
Bow all day. There's a bunch of fat wood in there. This is a Condor Mini Duco. Comes in a leather sheath. The idea behind this is you want to give it a little bit of a squeeze as you're pulling it out. And you want to put pressure pushing up against the spine to make sure that the cutting edge clears the sheath. Push up. This is either 1075 or 1095, I can't remember. But it's the Mini Duco. It's a little thick, a little short, kind of lightweight for, for what it is. Good for backpacking. Due to the nature of the handle, you don't even have to have a lanyard. Grips very well. This is another very lightweight offering, the Tops 170. It comes in a Cordura pouch with dual pockets here. It's got a piece of Velcro right here. <clears throat> very, very lightweight machete with a micarta handle. Very comfortable. I borderline love this machete. I like it and I love it. You can choke up on it right here. You can grip it here, or you can grip it back here. They make a longer version called a 210. This is the Tops 170. This is the Ontario 18-inch military machete. You can get a wide variety of sheaths. This just happens to be a Rothko sheath. Some sort of plastic. It has a saw back and some kind of a plastic handle. You can use a lanyard. You can or can't. I like this machete. Lends itself best to wearing gloves on it though. Is the Hanshu Bashing Kukri. It's made in China, 7CR13. I am not a big fan of products made in China, but this thing chops incredible. It has a snap right here, and a snap here holding the handle. This is an absolute beast of a kukri. It's got a hollow grind, 7CR13. I love this machete. Very comfortable handle. Cords like that. This is a real deal kukri, handmade in Nepal. This is made by the ex Gurkha Kukri House, handmade in Nepal. I'm not sure, I can't remember what the wooden handle is, but it comes with some sort of a sheath that may be wood on the inside. It has two small knives that come with it, piggyback with it. One is sharp to use as a small knife. 
The other is a steel that is used to sharpen this. Or if you're a bushcrafter, you could use it as part of flint and steel. Real deal kukri. This is the well-known and popular Condor Village Parang. It has a leather sheath with two snaps, and it's pretty much loosely based on a parang. It's got a walnut handle, and this is one of those ones that due to this backside here, you really don't need a lanyard. It ain't gonna sling out of your hand. <laughs> The grind is like an axe, convex grind. This is the K-Bar Cutlass. It's not really a cutlass, but it's loosely based on bolo shape. It has a Cordura, Cordura on the front, leather on the back pouch. It has two snaps, but you can undo the first snap and pull it out with ease. Loosely based on a bolo. It has a craton handle. I love this machete. Not real heavy, but capable of chopping. Turn the machete away from you, put your thumb in, blade up. That log is hard as a rock. This is a Marbles 18 inch machete. 18 inch Latin style machete. Has a wooden handle, made in Brazil. The sheath is homemade by me. Has a tarp in the back and a survival kit in the front. Has that beautiful sound that Tramontina sings. Next up, the Ontario SP-8. It comes in a Cordura sheath that's half Cordura, half leather. This is unusual because it has a full pop-open strap with a small strap. And then it has a dangler. I love a, I love a dangler on the sheath. Now this particular kind of machete is sharp on the bottom, sharp on the top, and has somewhat kind of teeth on here. Now this version of a machete is called a coping machete, which is sort of a search and rescue type machete. I can't explain all the ins and outs of it, but if you get a chance, do some research on a coping machete. And I love this machete. Quarter inch thick. Oh, and I meant to say for the second half of this video, Nick is behind the camera. Hey oh. Hey oh. Because <laughs> Nick was off running around with a kukri enjoying it for the first half of the video. Yeah, you remember how I went wild on that grass that time? Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> right. Cool. Next up, 
is a Tramontina Bolo. Now, this didn't come with a sheath, so this is a marble sheath with three pockets. It's a Cordura pocket. It has Velcro, and this, of course, has that Tramontina Sing, mm -hmm. made in Brazil, Bolo style. And I have covered the handle with baseball bat wrap called Lizard Skins. There'll be more about that in a future video. What a beautiful song. Brought to you by this machete. Honshu Boshing Parang. All right, this is the brother to the Honshu Boshing Kukri I showed earlier. 100% leather sheath, front and back, with a huge loop. Fits on any size belt. Mm. It's got two snaps on it, two leather snaps. Seven CR13 stainless steel. Love these things. Beautiful. Very comfortable handle. I absolutely love this machete. I didn't think I would because it's stainless and because it's hollow ground, but I love it. Turn the machete backwards, just like that. Lift it up, and there's your lanyard. This is the Ontario Kukri. The sheath is not a very good sheath. It comes in uh, Cordura, but I've made quite a few improvements. I added this snap to it. The factory snap is right here, and then I added a dangler. This machete, it's a Kukri by Ontario with a craton handle, and it has a full flat grind. If it had a convex grind, I'd love it. But because of the flat grind, I really like this machete. So I may have gotten it a little dirty. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> like I said before, blade facing away from you. Flip it up and there's your lanyard. That broke off. That worked. Ow. Did it hit you? Yes. <laughs> that was a pretty good thought I was supposed to be the one throwing falling debris. <laughs> this is the Condor Jungalo. It comes in an all leather sheath, leather front and back with the dangler. And as usual with Condor quality, the sheath is excellent. It's got two heavy leather snaps here. It's got a walnut handle. It's sort of similar to between a bolo and a kukri mix. Now when I first got this machete, I absolutely positively hated it. And I sanded and shaped the handle and reprofiled the grind, and now I like this machete. I don't love it, but I like it. Condor Jungalo. Took a while, didn't it? Shouldn't have put the camera on the log. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This is the Tarava Scrama or Scrama. I'm not sure. It has an all leather sheath with a very heavy plastic liner and a very heavy uh, dangler here. There's your leather strap. It's got a place on that heavy liner where you put your thumb to pop the blade out. Now, a lot of people would say that this is not a machete, that it's a big knife. But this shape is based on what's called a sax, S-E-A-X. 
Now I said that I was going to lump all these big blades together whether they were kukri, panga, parang, or sax. It has a handle that is very long and very, very comfortable. You can either come back like this for chopping or you can come forward for your fine carving. Now if you look, I don't think you can see this, but from here to here, do you see a little den in there, Nick? Mm -hmm. place where this is ground separately. I may have to zoom move. in pretty far. That's ah, too blurry. Okay. Well, from here to here is ground 25 degrees. From here to here is 34 degrees. What that means is this is your chopping surface, and this little section near the handle is your fine carving surface. Now, I absolutely positively love this blade. Love it. This is the K-Bar Grass Machete. The sheath that it comes in from the factory is black cordura, and I hated it. It was the stupidest, ugliest looking sheath I've ever seen. So, I made this sheath right here and added a knife sheath to it. When it comes to uh, grass, vine, and thorns, out of all the machetes, this K-Bar Grass Machete is my absolute favorite because this thing is like a razor blade. And if you'll see, can you see where the light's hitting it? Mm -hmm. It has like a, a primary grind, a secondary grind, and then a third grind. That's called a duplex grind. And that leaves you with a very fine edge, a razor edge. So this is not a wood chopper, but this thing, if you don't chop wood with it, it cuts grass and vines and things like that really good. The test for sharpness on stuff like this is if I can just cut the bare tops off of grass. And if I can do it left handed. Well, that pulled the oh, whole thing out of the ground. <laughs> it's hard to see where you're cutting. Oh, there you go. Now you're over here. Wait. Try this one. You're all over the place. I couldn't find you. Oh, there you go. I think I actually got that one. Alright, yeah, cut that yet. I think. This is the Condor Pack Go Lock. Comes in an all leather sheath, front and back. Doesn't have a dangler, it's just got a very, very tiny belt loop that I don't really care for. Two leather straps. Has a walnut handle. And it's in the shape of a go lock. Uh, I flattened out the sides of the handle that used to be round and then I'm torn between liking this and loving it. It's a good machete. RKT Chance in Hell Machete, also known as Columbia River Knife and Tool. It's a 100% Cordura sheath, and with this one I added a Mora and a Ferro Rod. This has three snaps here. It's got a snap there, and a snap there, and a snap here. So it's very solid in there. Now this is a very, very unusual machete because it's very narrow and very tall but the handle is fantastic you don't need a lanyard for this it's a very 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 comfortable 
And I'm between liking and loving this machete. <laughs> the more I use it, the more I like it. It's designed by Ken Onion. This is the Ontario 18 inch camp machete. Now, if you remember the 18 inch military machete I had was in a Rothko sheath. This is a true spec sheath. So, true spec Rothko and marbles all make sheaths to fit these. Pretty much the only difference in this one and that other one is it's got a smooth back instead of a saw back and it has a D handle for protecting your knuckles. I really like this machete. This machete is a little dull, so I'm going to show you a neat little trick. Instead of doing this, you can do this. It's an IC cut machete. They stopped making them in 2005, but this one is very special to me because it's been with me a long time and I've been through a lot with it. It has an all Cordura pouch. I have a saw attached to it. Cordura front and back. Elastic leg straps. Dangler. It's got a place right here for snaps and then a zipper going across it. Now this used to have a common secondary grind on it, but I did some experimenting, and I'll talk more about it in the future. But I could put a concave, uh, a, no, a convex grind on the whole thing. But right up here on this side, I put a little section of 25 degrees, and then on this side I put a section of 22 degrees. You can see it's much larger, and that'll be for my fine carving. But I absolutely love this machete. I wish they still made this exact model, but they don't. And I can hear how hard that log is. Hard as a rock. Like I can feel it shaking the ground underneath my feet kind of hard. Let's see if it carves still. Certainly don't think the little cut there is the machete's fault. This is the Ontario Knife Company Kukri. It has cordura on the front, leather on the back, with a good dangler. It has one strap here. It has a strap here, but it's not necessary. You can easily pull it out like that. The handle's craton, very comfortable. Not real thick, not too thin. I absolutely love this machete. Pretty lightweight to be such a good chopper. The Condor Parang, Bushcraft Parang, has a Cordura sheath. A lot of people hate this sheath. I don't mind it. It's got one snap here. You want to kind of pinch up and put pressure, put pressure, push up against this surface because that's what you want putting pressure against the sheath gliding out to keep from cutting it. I'm not sure what kind of material this is either 1075 or 1095, one or the other. But out of all the junk Condor has produced in the past, I love this machete. This is just, it's, it's the perfect machete. I love it for a, for a parang. 
it's a great machete. Condor bush craft moraine. That right there is about as close as to an axe as you'll come. Wonder Timberline Tactical Machete. I think this is designed by a guy named Dave Young. The sheath is very much overkill. It's a gigantic machete. It's not meant for your leg. It's meant to attach to a pack. But it's got molly on the front, molly on the back. So it's quite versatile. And it has all these little holes for paracord. It has this on the bottom, paracord. Supposedly you'll tie it to your leg, but I doubt it. That would be the last machete I would ever carry tying to my leg. Exactly. This is some heavy quarter inch elastic with a uh, cord lock that goes on there. It's got a very heavy, heavy liner. Now this machete is absolute overkill. Well, actually, after seeing the machete, yeah. Uh... Well, when I first saw it, I didn't know what to think about it. but I like it. I, I like it too. Now check this out. It's got a cord cutter here. Very sharp, highly polished. It has scallops. It has the grind for the chopping here. It has more scallops up on the top. And from here to here, I want you to try to zoom in on this. That grind, that is the most efficient sawback I've ever seen in my entire life. It is ground to perfection. That thing will rip you open. The design of this thing is called a panga. I forgot to mention on the back of it, it's got a glass cutter. Huh. Now, unfortunately, they stopped making this beast. And a beast it is. See the lettering, Timberline Tactical. Now, you have to wear gloves with this thing. This handle will eat you up. Mm -hmm. That handle will make you in panga. I'll see myself out. <laughs> Oh, I need a face shield. Ow. <laughs> taking, taking a wood shower. Ow. Ow. See if I can catch one. That's a lot of machete for backpacking, but it is a beast of a chopper. I, th I do love, I don't like how big it is, but I love this machete. You can pretty much do anything with all these different grinds on it. I'm covered in wood. <laughs> this is a homemade maca machete. Uh, it didn't come with a sheath. I rounded up the sheath from an old frost and it fit perfectly. Now, maca is a custom knife and machete maker from the UK. He has a, a YouTube channel titled Maca, M-A-C-C-A. -C -C -A. This is loosely based on a barong style. And I can't remember what this wood is, but it's like a, I think some kind of a zebra wood or something. I, I can't remember, he told me. But if you look at the mosaic pins, can you zoom in on those? Mm -hmm. And everything about this, the craftsmanship of this is excellent. And when you first see the handle, you might be kind of thrown but when you use it, choke up on it here, here, or go back here. When you first use it, it's really comfortable. But that's handmade maca, M-A-C-C-A. the newest addition to my collection. I haven't even had time to attach a knife to it yet, but it's the cold steel kukri. I used to always think that machetes needed to be 1075 or 1095. Cold steel makes them out of 1050 or 1055, and I thought it was a lesser steel, but it's it holds an edge for a while. Cordura sheath front and back, real hard plastic tip on it, has two snaps 
I don't know what the handle's made out of, but the handle's very comfortable. But this thing, it takes forever to sharpen it, but once you get it sharp, it'll hold the edge like you won't believe. I definitely like this machete. I'm a fan of the sheath having an extra guard on the end of it, because I've got a sword that the end of it stabbed through the, the sheath. Yeah, that. Yeah. Save the best for last. Out of all these machetes, people always ask me my opinion. There's a lot of machetes I like, several machetes that I love, but when they ask me which one is my absolute number one top of the heap favorite, it's the Ontario SP53. Now, this went out of production for a while, and then they brought it back, and the new sheaths don't have this kind of a pocket. They got a different sheath. This is the old, old one from 2012. But it has a uh, pocket here with a fast hex buckle. It's got molly webbing on the back. It has two of these. Very solid heavy plastic liner. And this is loosely based on the bolo shape. Some call this a machete, some call it a bolo knife. But it's a quarter inch thick beast. And it's 5160. Excellent material. Holds the edge forever. Craton handle. Pull it up, show the logo on the other side. Okay. Oh, this is better on this side. It's on both sides. Yeah. Generation 2 SP53. Yeah. On this side, it says 5160. <laughs> Quarter inch thick beast. I absolutely love this machete. All right, well, that's pretty much it. 30 machetes. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any questions about any in particular machete, put them in the comment section. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, Nick, anything you want to add? Uh, can't believe you started the video without me. Well, you ran off and was a chopping without me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'll throw the so, grass and I just had to go wild. That's right. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Like I say, y'all get out, y'all enjoy life. Pick you a machete. Uh, you can listen to my opinion or you can't, but pretty much try to remember to say what I did like and didn't like. So, can't go wrong with an Ontario, uh, pretty much Ontario, a K bar, a uh, Condor, or possibly a cold steel. I used to not like cold steel, but now that I've tried to, they're not bad. So, uh, Get out and enjoy life for the third time. I can't stress it enough. Stay in nature. Stay away from people. Stay out of the crowds. <laughs> we shall. See you in the next one. See you later.